Hi, welcome to the part 9 of this playlist. So we have uh, this list. I will be covering questions related to this list. All real certification questions. Please hit the subscribe and the like button. Please refer previous parts for previous questions like parts 1 to 8. Let's focus on this question. There is a website. There is a database. There is performance issue with the database sending data to this. So the developer says I will use Elastic Cache. So he puts Elastic Cache here in between. Okay. Now we want to know out of these right policies, which one will meet the requirement. So let's scan through the options. First one says you write to cache and you can sync the cache and database after that since you want very high response times. So this option will not work. You should put the data in the cache as well as database at the same time and hence C would be correct because it puts the data to cache and backend at the same time. So A is wrong for sure. D what it says is you put the data to the database first and invalidate the cache. If the cache gets invalidated that means the data in the cache is stale. It will not help you with high response times. It's like you have a cache but you cannot use the cache. Hence D is wrong. Now B Option B says write to backend first and wait for cache to expire. So uh, this will also not work because anything that says wait for something to expire, wait for something to be done, it will take excessive amount of time. Okay, it will not address your high response requirement. Hence, this is the final answer. Remember, elastic cache it gives you microsecond latency and it scales with in-memory caching very good for internet type scale applications like real-time gaming and so on facebook social media and so on who uses it the pokemon company uses it tinder uses it okay elastic cache has two versions it supports redis and memcache in the non-cloud world we used to use redis or memcache for caching in the cloud world amazon has bought in a version of which is called elastic cache for redis elastic cache for memcache and so on that way whatever caching features you had in the on-prem world you get it in the cloud world you use it for extreme performance it is highly secured okay and it is fully managed and hardened you do not need to worry about hardware provisioning software patching setup configuration failure recovery and so on and the beauty is elastic cache has automatic write throttling intelligent swap memory management you know all of these options that they were talking about that you sync cache first sync later invalidate the cache you do not require this is a managed service elastic cache is a managed service it happens automatically the swap memory happens automatically failover enhancements to improve the reliability happens automatically let's look at this one it's a very beautiful question you know there is a website or an app called pinterest here you can upload photographs you can view photographs and so on so similar to pinterest there is a requirement of a web application where you will upload photographs and where will you upload see similar to pin interest there might be scenarios where they also have amazon s3 buckets in the background so it has to be put in a private s3 bucket there is no restriction on size and each time an employee checks in, he should be or he or she should be able to see their profile images. Just like your Facebook, you are able to see your profile image, right? So that should happen. And the images should not be made public for security reasons. Imagine you put your photographs in the profile picture of Facebook and it goes public. Public means uh, anybody can download it. Anybody can morph it and upload it again. So what is the long term feasible solution? Let's scan through these four options. First one says pre-signed URL should be used. That is fantastic. It should be used. But the problem with first one is it is saying that, you know, there is just a single URL which will be created when the picture is uploaded. Every time the employee checks in, he or she will still use the same pre-signed URL. No, no, no. This is not secured. You know, we want security. So A is wrong. There are options which are more secure than this like D. What D says is it will 
generate a pre-signed URL every time an employee logs in. This is a perfect solution from a security standpoint. Why? Because nobody can hack and misuse the profile pictures. So this is my answer. But let's look at B and C. B says you can create VPC endpoints to allow employees to download pictures once they log in. B is an incomplete answer because it does talk about VPC endpoints, but it does not give you fully how it will handle security. So this is an incomplete option. And hence, I would strike this off and see. It says you use a base64 encryption, which it does is encoding a binary to text. Why it is done? The problem statement when you should use this is when there is a problem with handling the binary data or transmitting it over the media. We do not have any such problem mentioned in this question here, and that's why C is wrong. Moreover, C is not addressing the security aspect here. So, how will you, if anybody can encode and decode it, how will you make it secure? Nobody is answering that here, and hence. This would be my final answer. So if you use pre-signed URLs, all objects and buckets are private by default. And it is a very good way to share objects or allow your customers users to upload objects to buckets without AWS security credentials or permissions. That means you do not need to bring in each and every user of Pinterest to your IAM user base. You do not have to do that. Using pre-signed URLs, anybody can access it as long as you have provided the right pre-signed URL to these guys who wants to access these applications. So we would move forward now. Let's look at this question. What happens is there is, is a web application this is your web application and there is a kinesis stream which is used for streaming the click data and this goes here but the issue is you do not want to utilize it up to 12 hours and the data will be residing here at rest and you want to encrypt this data in kinesis streams at rest so you want to encrypt this data here because it is holded here for 12 hours Let's scan through the options. There are four options. First one says use SSL connection. See, you use SSL or TLS certificates for encryption at rest. You have to use a service called AWS Certificate Manager, and that will help you with encrypting data in transit using the TLS protocol or SSL certificates. Is that the requirement? No, you want to encrypt the data at rest, at rest, and not in transit. Hence, we would strike this out. B says use KCL, which is a part of Kinesis. It is used as a mechanism to develop consumer applications. It will not help you with encrypting data streams. It is just a mechanism to stream your data, capture it, producer, consumer, and so on. Since there is no way that it can encrypt, it is wrong. Let's look at C. It says encrypt the data once it is addressed with the lambda function this is a stupid option you never use lambda for encryption primarily because there is a 15 minute max timeout so after 15 minutes lambda would autocall itself so how would you encrypt the remaining data if it was halfway and hence this is wrong we are left with only one option which is this server side encryption it is a way to encrypt your data you encrypt the data at the object level so it encrypts the data before it's, it is at rest using customer CMK. Okay, data is encrypted before it is written to the stream storage layer and decrypted after it's retrieved from the storage. But overall, your data is automatically encrypted. And so this is the way you achieve data at rest encryption. You see this data at rest encryption. This is exactly what we need here. Encrypt data at rest so we would lock this answer this is our final answer let us quickly look at the questions we covered this is one this is the next one and this is the one please subscribe to this channel and hit the like button please it keeps me motivated to put on similar contents which are informative in nature which will help you ride the wave successfully this brings us to the end of part nine. Folks, do remember there are lots of playlists on this channel. 
which is dedicated to help you clear AWS, Azure, and GCP cloud certifications. Please leverage those, focus on the concepts, even though they are real certification questions, focus on the concepts, how to weed out the wrong options and arrive at the right ones. The concepts will help you mark the keywords in the questions so that you can answer appropriately keeping those keywords in mind. See you in the next part.